I saw my dad going to work every day during the pandemic. All my friends were telling me, you know, their parents were staying home. People were afraid to go out. But I was, I was scared for him, but I also, I just felt sorry for him. And I just wish that there was something I could do to help him. They worked so hard all their life, gave up so much to bring me to where I am today. The least I could do is just try to help them. So we're trying to test that now. We're building a preclinical mouse model. Sometimes I like to think of like medicine and biomedical research as, as like almost like a restaurant operation. Doctors taking care of patients. Patients are like customers. Biomedical research as sort of like the back of the house. In the kitchen, you're developing recipes. I'm a restaurant boy, but I'm also a scientist. Can I have a hot Thai tea? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Can you make the iced coffee, hot Thai tea, and iced tea? Thank you. No problem. On weekends, I would come out to like help my dad. We should try Vietnamese food sometime. I want to. Wait tables. No problem. Serve people. <laughs> Let me know if it gets too hot. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. I started to help out because you know our, our restaurant was struggling. We were one of the very first in Chinatown to have open in the month of May. It just seemed like Chinatown was this apocalyptic world that I never imagined. Why don't you take a video? I feel like I feel like it's hard to tell how bad it is. Yeah, take a video. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I've never seen anything like it. You don't need to go all the way. Oh my god, look at this. Yeah. It's not draining into the drain. Yeah, no. The water is coming out of the drain. Yeah. Okay, that's disgusting. Uh, you think I should call them? Oh, just wait for the water to go down. What do you, what do you exactly do you want from here? I need a phone but to do something. Okay. Okay. I took the restaurant in 1995. I've been so many things like uh, 911 and then COVID. At that time, I'm about 20 year old. I leave Vietnam, I came to Indonesia by boat. I stay in the boat four nights and five days. The boat is overloaded. We have throw out a lot of stuff like food, like clothes. The third day, that I ran out of the food, I got out of the water. I pray to God all the, on the boat all the time because, because everybody cry, most of the, the, the people cry in the boat. Oh, I don't know what happened. Uh, and they're very really scared at that time. When I came to the United States, I got nothing at all. I have no money. I don't know speak English too. I have to, to work hard. I work for the little guy for one year. And then the cleaning company for a couple of years, and then and then I opened the restaurant. At that time, I do two jobs at least twelve hours a day. When I was a kid, I was I remember being pretty frustrated with my dad, especially, and he was never really home. <laughs> 
you'll work from nine to like 11 and come home at 11. You know, as a kid, I was wondering like, why? But I remember there was this one time when I was about seven or eight, my class was going to see a WNBA basketball game. And so I told my dad about it. He said, okay, sure, I'll be a chaperone. And I remember watching the game from a distance. I hear like some sound. My friend like taps me and says, oh, look, Tony, isn't that your dad? He's sleeping and snoring. And they were just like laughing at him and laughing at me. And I remember feeling so embarrassed. When I look back at that moment, I realized that my father just wanted to spend time with me. Right. Just a bit of beef soup and uh, prepare for the fur. And mostly we cook every day. Beginning, we put some ginger, onion, and a beef bone, oxtail, and a biscuit. Let them boil about four four and a half to five hours. Pho, I think, to me, is also a story about Vietnamese immigration. You know, my parents, their journey to America was this long, arduous journey. I think Pho is like a representation of that. To me, it's a story about adversity. It's a story about resilience. When I look at my parents, I see people who came to America with like nothing, struggled to make a living. Through hard work, they, they were able to build up this restaurant. And my dad's getting to an age where he'll probably retire in the next five or 10 years. And I don't want him to look back on his career and be like, I built all of this and, and lost it. very barren in terms of like decorations because it's not there's nothing that like drops down like pendant lights or any kind of plants or anything so you think that it would benefit yeah. the space to have yeah. something like that yeah. my idea was like you know we could add like we could have like a somewhere where we could put a tree yeah like a like a banana tree something like that right there here one minute hold it Ah, that's nice. Uh, so this is, this is called wisteria, so that's yeah. like the vine. There's kind of like two different people you have to kind of work with. There's the people that live here and like work here, and they come here because of necessity. And then there's like the generation that's like us, that like we grew up with a lot more privilege, and we dine out in a way that's a little bit different from our parents. So that customer expects something different. I think that's like the difference between the older generation of Chinese Americans and like the newer generation. But the older generation, their mentality is like, if it's good enough to like keep me alive, that's just good enough. Catch what you can mentality versus chase what you want. Good to know, good to know. Yeah, but um, I, I do want to mention something. This is, there. I want your advice because there's sort of like a conflict between what I think a menu should look like for our restaurant and what my dad thinks would be good for the menu. He thinks that, you know, he wants to include as many photos as possible. Because uh, most the tourists, they, they don't know English a lot. And mostly they order the points under the picture a lot. Sometimes they don't know what the food look like. I think that like a good menu doesn't need photos. So I'm trying to find a, you know, sort of like a compromise. Yeah, I think I'll do an option. I'll show you an option that's like this, but it's a drawing. And then I'll show you an option that's photos. I know you, you want like pictures of like everything, right? Mm -hmm. I don't, I, I really don't think that looks good. Mm -hmm. People will really like just um, drawing style. the drawing style. Yeah, like, I think it looks classier. I think it looks Okay. Like yeah, a let's cleaner see, menu. Yeah, yeah, okay, let's see the dry color. Yeah, if the drawing, the color, it is uh, look clear, it's fine. Like, you can draw the different uh, kind of the noodles, for example, right? Like lo mein or pad thai. The, the Tony, he, when he came out to help my restaurant, he realized a lot of things need to change. But 
I tell him our restaurant do the old style for, for many old customers. If you want to change, you change a little bit by little bit. Don't change too much. The customer will scare and they don't know that thought the new owner. That's why we have to try that sometimes without argument a little bit about the that the remodel restaurant and change the, the, the stuff in the restaurant. I changed my mind to remodel because the Tony suggestion. He tried to help me a lot at the, in the COVID. Yeah. And and I really thank you him. He understand. He did working hard for this many years. I mean, it's not, it's not even just about the business. It's more about keeping the legacy alive. It's more about continuing my family's history. If my dad decides to retire and just sell the restaurant, our legacy is essentially gone. I kind of want to keep that going. It's more about continuing my family's history. We're telling a story through our food, where we came from. Because that's what it's all about.